Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, midweek supplemental edition. This is episode 203. And today on the podcast, we're going to uh, take a look at a new artisan folder. We're going to check out my state of the collection, which includes no new knives for me, but three new knives to the channel. And then we're going to take a look at the uh, top 10 and a half self-defense knives in my collection. And I would venture to say kind of out there, there are a lot more uh, great things out there on the market, but these are some of the best. So we're going to go through those first. Uh, but first, as always on this show here, we're going to do a little pocket check. It's my chance to show off what I'm carrying today. And uh, also an opportunity for you to uh, get back to us and let us know what you're carrying. Uh, there are several ways to do that. You can email me. You just go to the uh, go to the website. It's bob at thenifejunkie.com. Or you can call 724-466-4487. That's the listener line. Let us know what you're carrying in your pocket. We'll play it here on the show and uh, give, you, give you some props. All right. So today, what am I carrying? I am carrying something I, I haven't uh, carried in a while, but... Um, this is something that always boosts my confidence and boosts my uh, my emotions, strangely enough. This is the Emerson Commander. I got this. This was my first high-end, you know, production tactical knife. Got it in 2000. Uh, ordered it in 1999. Got it in 2000. Beautiful, beautiful knife. And still just rock steady, sturdy, smooth as glass. Uh, everything about this knife is, uh, is pretty outstanding. Um, I just rarely carry it. But like I said, uh, I carry it when I want a little boost of confidence. Tomorrow I start my my new job. So uh, I'm going to be carrying that uh, commander around. Uh, I've carried it on, uh, you know, I direct uh, TV and uh, I have... I have carried it on times when I've had very nerve wracking live shows and things like that. Put the commander in my pocket and I am the commander and it just gives me confidence. Okay, enough of that. So I'm carrying that today. Love that knife. Wouldn't mind getting an updated version of that. This is, uh, you know, 21 years old. Be cool to have a new one with the standoffs and the whole new construction. Second, uh, I do know I'm going to be breaking down quite a bit of cardboard later today. Uh, there's been more trips to Ikea, uh, a seemingly endless renovation of a child's room here. Uh, so I will be breaking down cardboard. I have two knives specifically for that uh, today. Uh, first is the Black Stallion by Off Grid Knives. Uh, ooh, big, big thumb smudge. I mean, you know it's a bad thumb smudge when you can see it on black wash. Uh, there we go. So this is an outstanding knife. It's uh, designed by Carrie out there at Off Grid Knives in California, produced by Best Tech Knives in China. You know Best Tech Knives. They create, uh, they they just build awesome knives. They have their own in-house stuff and their OEMs for, for great companies like Off Grid. And uh, this Black Stallion is just a beefy workhorse. You have a three and a half inch, um, what is that, sheep's foot? Sheep's foot blade, pretty aggressive quite a nice point on that. I mean, you could you could uh, use this like uh, the Yojimbo is intended to be used for sure without any issue. Uh, but also it's a very broad blade with thin blade stock and about almost a half height uh, saber grind. So this thing is going to, uh, this thing just shears right through the cardboard, yawns it wide open. You got uh, really nice ergonomics here. Great jimping on the thumb, just sort of something to let you know where you are. It's not going to lock you in there for all eternity, but it's uh, it's it's good for tactile response. You got this uh, awesome flipper that is low profile here, and then when you open it up, hides in the finger guard. I like that quite a bit. You have a really nice sort of golf ball pattern pocketing uh, that really, really grips the hand, and of course you have options uh, with your clip, tip up of course, only. Uh, some of Carrie's other knives feature the screws, uh, you know, deeply set so that there's no issue. These screws, I have to say, are audaciously proud of the scales. So, you know, coming in, these are fine for work pants, but coming in and out of new pants or something like that, you might have some issues. In any case, uh, number three, since it's a big cardboard day, is, well, probably the best cardboard knife uh, under five and a half inches. I do find that the big cold steels are great for cardboard, but, you know, they're not specialized for that. Uh, this is the uh, Steingraber Performance Knives Shark. I've been talking a lot about it recently. 
Alex was a guest on the show. He's a real, um, I don't know, mad scientist with the steels. He has uh, really worked through and created his own heat treat recipes for all the great steels. I don't want to say all the great steels, but for many great steels. This is crewware right here. Um, but the real universe and selling proposition of this knife is the fact that it's thinly ground, it's a broad blade, and it's fully flat ground. So he gets an incredibly, incredibly thin behind the edge measurement there. And it just makes cutting cardboard actually fun. I usually find that, uh, well, it's, it's not something, even though I love knives and I love using them, cutting cardboard over and over, big giant boxes, is not something I actually cherish. Uh, but this makes it fun and easy, really. I mean, it zips through. It's like unzipping cardboard. So that's what I'm carrying today. I got the Emerson Commander from the year 2000. Uh, I have the um, Black Stallion from Off Grid Knives and the SRK. I mean, the SPK, Steingraber Performance Knives, Shark. So uh, next up is some somber news, I have to say. Uh, as many of us have learned over the past week, Ken Vihikite, who is on this show, he is uh, the man behind Black Rock Knives, uh, had a stroke and uh, is, um, you know, it, convalescing now. And uh, hopefully he he uh, is strongly on the mend. I'm not sure what his condition is, frankly, but um, he does support his family of six with his knife making. Uh, that's something we discussed on the show. And um, so obviously his knife making has come to a halt as he as he heals. So there is a, um, a GoFundMe out there. They're looking to, to raise $50,000. You know, medical bills are are, are, are damn expensive. And uh, they're, they have uh, reached a, a decent 11,902 as of the recording of this. But uh, uh, we will, I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do here, but we're going to auction off a knife or two here and, and um, do something else and, and send the funds to uh, Ken's GoFundMe. Not only am I a huge, huge fan of his work and, and, and I, you know, he's one of the few custom knives I own. Um, I really, really liked Ken. He was such a nice guy. It was, was such a nice guy and the show is such a nice guy. And, uh, uh, I really grew fond of him in the hour I spoke with him. So um, it, it's a double hit. So let's let's see what we can do to help support Ken. And um, one way you can help support Ken is this this right here, the Monkey Thumper, uh, was one of two designs that Fox Knives uh, for their 2021 lineup um, licensed and is producing. Here you can see the Monkey Thumper in its uh, on the Fox website in its production. Um, iteration. You can get it in all black with black G10 or uh, sort of a tumbled finish with um, looks like tan micarta. And uh, and then also the Ryu, which is a beautiful uh, sort of Tanto, not Tanto, what is that called? A, um, a Quaken design, sort of a traditional self-defense Japanese knife. Beautiful, beautiful knife. You can get it in the all black. You can get it in the tumbled finish with the tan handle, or also this uh, really nice um, Damascus with carbon fiber. So that is a way you could help Ken, is by purchasing some of his awesome knives uh, through Fox Knives as his uh, as his custom work has tapered off for, you know, temporarily uh, while he heals. So let's all pray for Ken Vihikite for a quick and uh, a swift recovery. Uh, he's a great guy, and he makes such tremendous knives and is a, is a, a you know, a real stalwart addition to the to the knife community so pray for him sir and ma'am uh next we have a new patron here on uh, the knife junkie he's a he's a gentleman junkie and actually on thursday night i made the mistake of saying we had two but actually uh i, I mentioned his on-screen name and then his real name uh because he signed up twice and accidentally uh but it's slip joint joe that's how we're gonna call him slip joint joe uh, I, he has done a lot of commenting on Thursday night knives and, uh, on the videos and, um, and also on the podcast. And as you can tell from his name, he is a slip joint fanatic and, uh, I am too cyclically. I mean, I always love my slip joints, but, uh, you know, I'm cyclical with my obsessions. I, I think you have to be, if you're, if you're obsessed with everything all the time, uh, there's work to be done and, uh, I don't like to work. So, uh, New slip, uh, new new patron slip joint, Joe. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here, and uh, hopefully, quite soon, I I uh, orbit back into a slip joint phase. 
but uh, you, you caught me in a fixed blade phase. So we'll, we'll come back around. Uh, so speaking of patron, uh, Patreon, are, are you irrationally fond of knives? Are you just drawn to knives in a strange way? Do you spend probably more money than, than most on knives? Well, then maybe you should check us out on Patreon. There are three levels of support. You get Knife Junkie stickers. You get a mention on the podcast. You get exclusive content, uh, including this show and the interview show early without ads and a lot more. Uh, the funds that we raise on Patreon goes to infrastructure needs, the apps, equipment, and also knives for review and for giveaways. So please check us out on Patreon and see what helping us gets for you. Uh, the quickest way to go there is thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. That's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Okay, as always on this show, I like to talk about uh, the new things that are coming out uh, that are being announced in the knife world. And the first up is a new folder from Artisan Cutlery. Uh, Artisan Cutlery is another one of those um, Chinese OEM slash make their own design, in-house designing uh, manufacturers that just knocks it out of the park with their quality uh, and with their interesting designs and such. They have a new in-house design called the Cazador, and it is a Warncliffe flipper. And when I opened up this article, oh, first of all, I, let me just get this out of the way. It's a, it's a 3.4 inch blade. It's got G10, uh, and it features their their own proprietary steel AR RPN9. Just rolls right off the tongue, AR RPN9, um, and uh, looks awesome. It has actually, it's a sub one hundred dollar knife, and it's got some flourishes like sculpted titanium pocket clip and uh, anodized. Um, um, pivot collar, things you don't necessarily frequently see on a sub hundred dollar knife. Um, but when I looked at this and looked at the article, uh, my eyes uh, were scouring around for the name Mike Emler. I thought for sure this is the folding version of Mike Emler's recent artisan cutlery sea snake, because you look at that blade and it's a dead ringer. Uh, the only difference is the, the choil is a little less finger choily here, a little more sharpening choily, but still a large uh, sharpening choil. So in-house design, yes, but uh, was it was it inspired by uh, by a custom collaborator? I don't know, and I'm not trying to stir up any controversy. But I looked at that and I was like, Mike, awesome man! He made a flipper version of that awesome sea snake neck knife, and uh, in reality, it's an in-house design. Whatever the case may be, and however I actually feel about it, I really like it because I really like the sea snake, and uh, this flipping version of that kind of knife that kind of beautiful Warncliffe shape um, would make a welcome addition to my very small artisan cutlery collection. Actually, it's a one, one knife collection. I have the kinetic tool, the thing that is, um, it's like a multi-tool, but it's in the shape of a, of a Bally song slash automatic. I should have busted it out for this, but in any case, it's a pretty cool knife. It's been featured here before. Uh, I say knife, but there's no blade on it. Anyway, check it out. The new artisan folder in AR PR nine, the, um, I wanted to say sea snake, the Cazador. Very cool looking knife. All right, next, um, there is a pen maker that I need to become more of a, a, a pen geek. You know, I've been talking about my my fountain pens. I don't have many of them. I like to actually just write with them. I'm not much of a collector when it comes to pens, but there's a company out there called Tactile Turn, which I know I've just kind of seen in EDC dump photographs, for instance. I don't really follow pen makers on Instagram, but I follow a lot of people who show pictures of what they're carrying. And frequently I've seen these tactile turn uh, knives. They have little bolt not, uh, pens, little bolt pens, and um, just all sorts of cool EDC pens with, with really beautiful textures milled into them. They're real masters at, at making these pens. Uh, in any case, recognizing that pen geeks are very adjacent to knife geeks and frequently one in the same, uh, um, Tactile Turn decided to make tactile knives. And uh, this is the first knife they have uh, coming out. It's called the Rock Wall. And a uh, couple of the things that uh, Mr. Hodges, their, their, uh, their chief, wanted out of this knife was uh, something that had the, the sort of emblematic textures that you find in their knives. I mean, in their pens. I'm going to be doing that a lot. Uh, their pens are known for their unique and uh, 
and um, sort of complicated textures. And those textures hide where? Kind of like uh, the three-dimensional version of stonewashing. Well, I guess that is technically three-dimensional, but you get my drift. Uh, the other thing he wanted out of this was a very thin, thinly ground, thin behind the edge knife, a really good slicer and cutter in a compact package. It's a 2.84 or 2.89 inch blade. So it's kind of in that uh, Delica region. And, and another thing mentioned in this article, uh, an excerpt from the interview with the gentleman who, who uh, designed this, he, he goes on and on about the clip about how amazing and unique it is. And I cannot wait to find out what that is. It looks cool, looks cool to me, but uh, this is a guy who's focused his his uh, creative attentions for the longest time on pens. And pens also have clips. So I'm interested to see what he's brought with him from the pen designing game into the knife clip designing game, because he seems from this article very excited about the clip. So uh, I'll be looking forward to that. Uh, he seems like a really interesting guy. I'm sorry, I called him Mr. Hodges. And that's because I had a senior moment and couldn't remember his first name. Um, and maybe it'll come to me. Uh, but we talked about tactile turn a while back when a, a bolt action pen knife was created by them. Uh, looks like a pen, and then you rotate it, and a, and a, a little tanto comes out. I mean, what a great knife. I saw the uh, great knife pen thing. I saw this first featured on Cutlery Lover's channel. He got one of these. and. Uh, well, that's another guy I'd like to talk to, Cutlery Lover. Uh, in any case, check out Tactile Knives. Uh, they're a great follow on Instagram. You can kind of see the um, evolution. If you go back far enough, you can sort of see the evolution of the of the uh, rock wall, which really, really looks like it's going to give uh, some knives like Quiet Carry and uh, James Brand and uh, some of those. It kind of looks like that sleek, classy um EDC knife, uh, maybe the kind of knife that someone who's not necessarily a knife guy, but is a, a guy, knife person, but really likes to be well prepared, has a nice pen that they carry around, has has all the gear, has the EDC gear and cares about it, but doesn't necessarily care about collecting pens. I could see this knife, the Rockwall, being that one nice knife that they get because it goes kind of in every situation. So cool, cool looking knife. Uh, I look forward to trying to get him on the show. I'd love to talk to him about pens and knives. Gosh, two of my geekeries coming together in, in one guy. Uh, I mentioned Instagram before. You can check out, us out on Instagram. Uh, it's the Knife Junkie. Uh, it's, yeah, the knifejunkie.com slash Instagram. And they have, um, up there we have excerpts from the shows each week. We, we put up audiograms. Jim uh, distills out awesome one-minute moments from these interviews and, uh, and, we post those up. You can get a little tease to the show. Also, I put up pictures of my EDCs and of uh, new knives and, and such. So definitely check us out on Instagram. I, I find sometimes you just don't have time for a video, uh, but you're jonesing for that uh, knife content. Just go to Instagram and uh, check us out while you're there. Uh, still to come on the show, we're going to go stay to the collection. Those aren't new knives to me, but they're new knives to the channel, donated by our good friend, uh, this old sword, Blade Reviews. And then we'll take a look at my top Ten and a half self-defense knives. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Dave, our good friend, this old sword blade reviews. Uh, he participates every week. He joins us on Thursday Night Knives. He's a he's a big time commenter on the show, and uh, he's got a great channel uh, called This Old Sword Blade Reviews. On, uh, on the old YouTube. And he, Dave has been a practitioner of Filipino martial arts, studied under some of the, the top luminaries, Leo Gahe among them. And, uh, and so he's got years and years of knife experience from the tactical uh, fighting martial arts side of it. And he's got a vast and sprawling collection. Uh, and the thing that I really resonate with is that his collection is bent the way mine is bent, kind of towards the more self-defense-y uh, knives. Those are just fascinating. I, I like the designs of them, and, and so does he. In any case, uh, he's done this a couple of times where he's sent the channel a few knives, uh, and we've used them for giveaways, and we've used them um, for sales, and then one of them I kept myself because 
I haven't kept it. I'm fostering it. I'm going to send it out into the world someday as a fully mature uh, Cold Steel Immortal. But until that happens, I'm fostering it. So Dave, thank you for your generosity. It's greatly appreciated. And uh, once again, he sent me three really super cool knives that are going to be hard to let go, but we're going to let them go. And uh, the first one here is the Off-Grid Rapid Fire. I'm just going to show it to you closed first because it is a beautiful knife closed. It's got uh, this, this version has the Coyote 10 G10. And what I really love about it are these pockets that are milled out. These regular little hexa hexagonal, elongated hex hexagons in a network. It's like kind of a squashed, it's like, a, this is what it's like. It's like an SD uh, beehive stretched out into HD. And uh, it really gives you incredible grip actually feels good. It's like a massage on your hand, gives you a great grip. The handles in, in cross section are also contoured. So this thing, the handle of it reminds me in feel of the old um, Zero Tolerance 0560. Is that what it was? The 0560, the, the second, the big flipper hinderer collaboration with ZT. It was milled on both sides and it had this sort of pocketing. And I just love the way it feels. It's it's great, sticks in your hand like not like, like you wouldn't believe. But then when you uh, also look at it, it's also reminiscent of the 300 series ZT. And and I didn't think of that until someone mentioned it on Thurs Thursday Night Knives. They said, oh, it looks like the new 308. Well, I wouldn't say it looks like the new 308, but I would say it has some of the very same elements of it. Um, but I don't have the 308, and I wish I did, because I would compare them. This has the really beautiful recurve drop point blade that you see on uh, off grids um, uh, fixed blade knife, the uh, uh, back country. I'm sorry, I have these names, man. Uh, the back country. I adore it. it yes, it is a very uh, useful blade shape, but to me, that recurve adds up to menace. And you know, I like a little menace in my designs. So this is not only a very useful, hard use knife, uh, but it's got a little bit of that menace. And not for nothing. This is a uh, um, uh, assisted open, but this is a really awesome assisted open. Now I know um, Off Grid uses Best Tech for their um, uh, less premium line, and they use Wee Knives for their premium line. So I'm pretty sure this is a Best Tech. And uh, wow, Best Tech, nice job on the assisted open. I really like it. There's no Jello lag. There's none of that. Um, weirdness. I don't know. This is just, uh, this is a very enjoyable uh, 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 assisted open flipper to use. And you don't hear me say that too often. Um, okay. So thank you, Dave, for this one. Uh, this, I'm not sure. Ex like I said, all of these will go to good use. By the way, this is hollow ground. It's already thin blade stock, but it's hollow ground to like nothing. You can part, you can slip between atoms with that edge, literally. Okay. Next uh, we have the Kubi Raven. This is the first Kubi I've ever had in hand, and I am extremely impressed. And then, uh, so I had it in hand for a day or two, playing with it. My God, this is awesome. It feels so high quality. And I started to formulate an opinion as to what uh, it was going to be called and what it was going to cost. Uh, I, I, what it was going to be called just because I find knife names and no, uh, numbers and designations to be confounding lately. There's just so many knives, so many knives, so many names, and a lot of them are starting to get repeated. I mean, look at the Talos. <laughs> Les George and, and Bill Harsey put out uh, uh, production knives through Spartan Blades at the same time, and Bill Harsey names his knife after a knife that Les George has made in the past. And they laughed about it and everything, but uh, it's just funny. There's just so many knives and they're hard to name. So what the hell is this going to be called and how much does it cost? Had no idea what it was going to be called. Um, it looks aggressive to me. It looks futuristic. It also reminds me a little bit of the bad monkey, uh, the bad strap, uh, the back strap there. And the pommel look, reminds me a little bit of a, of a bad monkey by, uh, you know, uh, Southern Grind. So. I don't know what it was going to be called. Shark something. I don't know. It looks kind of shark-like too. Uh, I look it up. It's called the Raven. Beautiful knife. I, I I can see Raven in the in the uh, blade. That swedge and the opening hole looks kind of like an eye. A very thin, slender, super sharp, 
what is this, D2, I think? Oh, OS 10. That's right. OS 10 is a great steel, at least how cold steel does it. So this thing feels premium. It's uh, it's on bearings. It's got this beautiful green, um, what is that, burlap micarta handle. By the way, beautiful pivot. That's the only branding you see on this knife, except Jelly, uh, Jelly Jerry's maker mark. He's the designer on the backside. This knife is like 50 bucks. I could not believe it. 50 bucks. I knew that Kubi going into this, I knew that Kubi is kind of a um, high value brand, um, but I also know that they're well respected by people that I respect highly, Jimmy Slash and many others. Uh, but just never having one in hand, I was not expecting this level of quality. I swear it's a, it's a $150 knife uh, at least in a, in a $50 price package. So very cool knife. This will be a hard one to let go, though I, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't carry it much, but but I still, I just think it's gorgeous. Why wouldn't I carry it much? Uh, I haven't been carrying flippers much recently, but also 50 bucks. Look at that. Yeah, that's right. If you can't see what I'm talking about, there's a sculpted titanium pocket clip on this knife. Also, it's got the hidden lanyard uh, attachment there with the little uh, little pile there. So great knife. Also has the micarta uh, backspacer, which is a which is also a nice touch. Okay, uh, last is the Tops Knives backbite, a very cool self defense knife uh, designed by C Despins, uh, part of the Max Venom crew, and uh, you can see this. Uh, this knife is just very unique. You can see it has a, a very wedge-like top edge that would probably be great uh, for like cracking bones or something if you're going to, if you're going hunting. <laughs> this is not a hunting knife, obviously, but uh, that that sort of really obtuse chisel edge looks like it'd be good for something like that. Uh, at the end of this top swale here, uh, the second half of it is sharpened. Let me see if I can if I can point that out to you. Okay, you see right there where my finger is. Uh, there is a semicircular swale on the back of this knife, and it starts to be sharp right about there. So this can be used and held in a number of different ways. You can hold it in this sort of standard um, fencing grip like this with your thumb in that little swale there, and you have something that you can thrust with. You have something that you can do this kind of, um, uh, well, it's... Hitting hitting them with this sharp point on this thing will be nasty, kind of like hitting them with a hawk point or hawk bill blade. And then you have this edge on the back. I mean, I don't know. I don't even know how you would use this. I guess reverse grip would be best because uh, you get all these picot. I don't know. This is just an incredible implement. It's so, so scary looking. And uh, I think it might take a little bit of training to use in a way that, that uh, it's fluid and and makes a lot of sense, but it's also something you could just have uh, and just pull out and, and use in a very gross motor way and uh, make a mess. I, I have no doubt. This is one thing that I really love about tops. I love a lot of things about tops, but they just come out with so many unique designs. And so many of them are small, hideable implements for self-defense. And this is, you know, part of that canon. And, uh, it's a really neat knife. Uh, neat. Don't say neat often. It's a really cool knife. And uh, I'm very grateful to Dave for sending it along here. All three of these knives are going to make their way out into the world in one way or other. And um, and definitely uh, um, help Ken Vahikite in the process. Okay, let me put these away. Uh, again, check out This Old Sword Blade Reviews on Instagram. And, uh, and check out all of the really cool stuff Dave collects. And he's he also does sub-collection videos, which I like. Oh, my favorite karambits. Oh, here are all my favorite Pakal-style knives. I love that kind of thing. Okay, what's another kind of thing I love? Well, you know that uh, part of my collecting aesthetic is the self-defense, the weapony knives. I am not, a, here's a disclaimer, I say it all the time, I'm not law enforcement. I am not a badass. I am not a soldier or a, a military guy. I've never used a knife in self-defense. That's me knocking on wood. And uh, and I never plan to, but I've had um, 
a lot of fun over the last 20 years learning how to use knives uh, in martial arts. And uh, uh, 20 that's 20 years on and off, by the way. I haven't trained a solid 20 years. I'd be, I'd be levitating right now. Um, but it's just where, where my fascination lies. Uh, when, when you think about how they could be used, it's horrifying. And I don't like to think about that. I do like to think about the beautiful design and the purpose-driven design of these things. Because these modern self-defense knives are just the latest iteration in that piece of flint that was napped down to protect yourself against the fellow troglodytes in that cave. Or, or, or in the other cave, you know, across the, the ravine. So these are just the latest iteration in something that's been uh, with humanity forever since the birth of tools. And that is the knife, but the, the knife for self-defense. All right, so let's get into it. Before we get into the list of 10 and a half, and you'll see why, it's, uh, that why there's a half there, I want to talk about a few also rans. A couple of runners up that I, I pulled out right before we rolled because these... Uh, should be on on here for one reason or another, but I just don't, you know, they don't resonate with me or maybe they take too much training. Uh, first one doesn't quite resonate with me only because of the carry method. And, uh, I, but I think in my uh, recent, with the way I've been carrying fixed blades recently, I could work this back in. My brother got this for me among many other great knives. This is the TDI. This is by K-Bar. And this was originally marketed as a an off side, an off weapon side knife for law enforcement, and it's shaped uh, vaguely like a gun. It's got a very pistol grippy setup here, so that people who are used to training with guns but not used to training with knives can use this intuitively without having to do much training. Um, for knives. And the idea is this is this rides on your offhand and if someone grabs your pistol or your you know your service uh, weapon you can grab this from the other side and you know uh stop their effort how how however you can manage that. Um but again it's set up to be intuitive for the gun guy basically. Um and in doing so sets the blade up. I mean it, this is a great position to be in. You don't have to you know, in thrusting, you don't have to torque your wrist to get the point where you need it to be. Um, uh, in a slash, it's like a, an ultra kukri, you know, the, the, just the, uh, the angle of the blade to your hand. So it is a very, very uh, useful um, self-defense tool. Um, and something that's inter interesting to me is that it was created for um, gun retention or weapon retention for military. Another one that's not on the list, um, but could be, is my new uh, uh, antimatter by Arcane Design. It's just an amazing folding dagger, and yeah, the dagger is an incredibly tactical design. You know, you got you got a very very stabby double edged blade here. The reason this isn't on the list is because <clears throat> uh, everything on my list is a little more utilitarian, and there you'll find nothing with uh, just naked titanium handle scales. I don't know if this is true or not, but to me, it seems like in a self-defense situation where your hands might be sweaty or might have, you know, you might have beer, it might be in a bar, you know, who knows? Your hands might be wet for whatever reason. And to me, I don't know, maybe this would grip beautifully, but to me, this is more of a gentleman carry, um, let's get in a knife fight duel rather than a self-defense knife. Uh, so I'm not gonna put that in there, but I, I am gonna show it off. And then the last is, I'm not featuring any karambits. You're all gasping now. Oh, you're talking about self-defense knives and you're not showing karambits? That's true. And the one reason, this is the Fox 599, a beautiful karambit, if you ask me. I love the shape of it. Um, this is the 599, which means it's the smaller handle, which means it fits mere mortals, such as myself. The The original 579 was a, uh, there was a mistake in the in the translation of metric or English to metric, and the handle ended up being very long. Um, so I got the 599 because it's smaller. Great knife. And you can also, it also comes with a trainer. This is this is one of the great things about karambits. There are a lot of karambits that you can find trainers for. This, the Emerson, there are others. But the reason I didn't put this in my list of 10 and a half is that it requires a lot of training, uh, I think. Uh, a lot of people think it's very intuitive. You put your finger through the ring, pull it out, that wave opens up the blade and you just start. Uh, but I, I don't think it's that 
intuitive. And actually, I, I know just enough to be dangerous to myself of Karambit. Uh, I didn't train that much in it when I was uh, heavily into Kali. Um, but like I said, I, I learned some stuff and I think I could use it if I needed to. But who knows, man, if I'm all uh, adrenaline up, who knows if those skills would go out the door? And, 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 and they do require skills. You can really mess yourself up with a Karambit. I have done it uh, numerous times. You can stab yourself. I think I think they can be more dangerous to train than Bally songs, and I know a lot of people don't like those. So I, I would be I would be somewhat cautious with any ringed thing, and uh, and and any any karambit. It 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 puts the blade and the edge, the point and the edge in a, in a and actually kind of an odd and uh, um, in an odd orientation that really requires training. I'm stopping right there. Okay, I could go on and on. All right, so no karambit, no folding dagger, and no TDI in this particular list. But let's get on to the list itself. All right, first is a classic. Uh, classic both in my collection, it's an old cold steel, but also a classic out there in the world. It's called the push dagger. And this is a double-edged, this is called the safe keeper. It's a three and a half inch double-edged blade. One, two, yeah, uh, three and a half inch double edged blade, super sharp. These uh, bevels are hollow ground, so it's not just a thruster. You can you can really slash with this thing if you had to. Uh, okay, I'm gonna stop saying if you had to. That's kind of the caveat with with everything here. Um, just a beautiful knife. The the mythology goes that these were used a lot by um, riverboat gamblers. You, know, you hide it near Cumberbund. And then uh, some sort of disagreement comes up over cards. You pull it out. Uh, it takes very little training. You just punch with it. Um, it and uh, another benefit is that it's very hard to disarm. You have it gripped in your, uh, you have it gripped in your fist like this. It's going to be a very hard knife to disarm. There's not much to hold on to uh, to do that disarm. It's pretty much all sharp blade. So that is number one. I'm going to say. Uh, for my collection, it's the safekeeper, but in general, the push dagger. Mm -mm. It's so cool, such a cool design, and and it harkens back all the way to the, uh, to the what is those, what is the Indian gauntlet knife called? Someone someone say in the comments, it's a it's a a knife that they grip this way and the blade comes out that way. Um, ah, I'm I'm having a, a mind seizure here, so don't remember what it is, but. Uh, the whole concept of the blade protruding between your fist, between the fingers of your fist, uh, I love because it is intuitive. All right, next is also an intuitive curved blade and, and kind of the antidote to what I was talking about with the karambit. Uh, this is the Elvia. Uh, this is made by Copus Blade Works, and it is uh, a collaboration with Ed Calderon. Uh, Ed Calderon is a, is a famed... Um, former Mexican drug interdiction officer and um, dealt a lot with cartels and 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 uh, some darker side of things. And uh, knives were a part of, are a part of his day to day. And actually having to use them uh, have, have been a real possibility in his life and probably, and I know an actual reality. And he, as a backup weapon, started carrying around a fruit knife uh, that his mother used to carry around. And, uh, actually thwarted a mugging with, and he thought, wow, this is an incredibly useful knife. And uh, the way he has it set up is in Pical, Pical grip, which means you, you grip it with the point down and the edge in. And when you're required to use this to defend yourself, uh, it will work with the arcing motions of your elbow, your wrist, and your shoulder. Uh, the way that blade kind of reaches out at that somewhat odd angle from the handle, accommodates that arc and puts the point in the perfect place uh, for thrusting. So, uh, or for that kind of uh, backhanded stabbing there. So this is really up there and, and it, it, it has a different, you know, with the karambit, it requ requires this motion, pushing out and pulling up, pushing out and pulling up, which Ed Calderon argues, and I agree, is less natural than this grip. 
pulling down and in, pulling down and in, pulling down and in. So in any case, that's that's basically the reason the, the high amount of training and the less uh, actually intuitive movement is why I didn't put the karambit in, but put in this uh, Elvia design. I have it in the folding Emerson version, and I have a couple of uh, actual fruit knives that I've uh, sort of bent towards self-defense just for fun. Obviously, I haven't used them, but... Uh, I put a, on this Elvia, I put a, a little wrist, a little, um, not wrist, cord wrap there. Not a very pretty job, but just to fill out the, the center of the palm. Makes it easier to grab. Also, it has this great sheath that you can just drop in the pocket and uh, with no clip, no nothing, not even this cord. And when you pull it out of your pocket, you can snag the sheath on the inside seam of the pocket and pull the knife out. And uh, so it's a very stashable, hideable way to do it. I have it on a cord. I like to put it, just kind of rest it in under the belt. And and then you can just draw it and and the cord pulls in and uh, unsheathes it. Okay, next is the tops. Where is it? There it is. Tops Rapid Strike. Yeah, there's going to be another tops on this uh, list too. I, they, like I said before, when I was talking about the uh, backbite, they just make these great small self-defense knives. This is the Rapid Strike. First of all, great little sheath. And I love their sort of old school metal clips. I think they're awesome. Uh, they're not as fancy as the tech locks and such, but uh, I think they're better. I like them better. Okay, so here it is. With this knife, it's got a bayonet grind. You can opt for sharpened top or, or, uh, or not. Of course, I got the sharpened top and um, I ended up, I've been talking about this recently, taking about three quarters of an inch off the tail end. First, it was the glass breaker that was there that hurt the thumb, if you cap the end with the thumb. So I, I got rid of that first, but the handle was still a little bit too long and kind of pointy. And when I would sit down with this, I wear it in about the three or four o'clock position, it would jam up into my ribs. And uh, so I just rounded it off and uh, put some grooves in there so it would uh, draw easily. and. Uh, there you have it. It's like a brand new knife. The handle ha uh, the handle hides perfectly in the hand. And um, so it's not too much. And for a in the waistband carry fixed blade knife, I like the short handle. And this does the trick. I would like to get another rapid strike, double edged, of course, and experiment with different uh, different ways of grinding down that back end. I guess not different ways. If I only get one, I can experiment with one other way. But uh, yeah, I love I love these kind of asymmetrical double-edged blades. They remind me like, uh, well, this is the bayonet grind. They remind me a little bit of the loveless, loveless style uh, sub hilt that is a clip point, long slender clip point, but the whole thing is sharp. I don't know, just warms the heart. Okay, next. Another one I've been talking about recently quite a bit. This is the Street Beat Bowie by uh, French former commando and general badass Fred Perrin. And he designs a lot of, of these uh, knives sort of inspired by its older French knives in which the blade itself is the guard. So it looks kind of reminiscent of a kitchen knife, the way it's set up here where the guard, excuse me, where the width of the handle is the same of the width of the blade and the thing stopping your hand from going up is a deep uh, finger choil there. This also has a nice short and rounded handle. It's a Coke bottle shaped in cross section here, or not cross section, but on the uh, dorsal view. And uh, it it's rounded just nicely enough so that when you're sitting in the car with this thing, it's almost, it's almost imperceptible. Now to me, maybe if I lose a tiny bit of weight around the middle section, you know, maybe this will be less noticeable. Uh, but it's pretty astounding how a five inch blade knife can can hide away so nicely in the belt. And when I say hide, hide away, I'm not trying to hide it from people necessarily. It's just that you want to be discreet. It tucks nicely away and it doesn't uh, it doesn't interfere. It doesn't print this uh, grippy material here. There's an inlay on the handle that's sort of grippy, sort of rubbery, but it's not rubbery enough to catch your shirt and uh, and, and cause a problem there. Also, it doesn't grip the skin in an unpleasant way. I don't like that, though I usually tend to put a t-shirt between the handle of whatever I'm carrying in the waistband and uh, and the knife uh, handle. This is VG10 
fully flat ground. It came to me not so sharp. A little disappointing for Spyderco, uh, but I've remedied that. And I noticed uh, this also rides at 3 o'clock or 3.30 on the belt in, uh, in, a, in an edge forward draw, so it comes out like this. And I did notice sometimes in practicing lifting up my shirt and actually pulling it out, my hand, my hand would sometimes slip off the back, not being quite used to the contours of this thing yet. So I added some uh, a little cord on the back here to uh, to aid in gripping. I allowed my I asked my six year old daughter to pick out the cord, and she picked this. So so we have a teal and pink rainbow fob there to help me draw this knife. Great, great knife. The Street Bowie. Not to be confused with the Street Beat, the three and a half version, uh, three and a half inch version of that knife. Okay, next in my list of ten and a half top self-defense knives is another Tops. This one, uh, such a cool knife. This one is designed by, uh, oh, who is this designed by? Sorry, I always forget his name. This is Dara Spina. I think this is designed by Richard Daraspina. Uh, so look at this knife. This is the, the Topps Felony Stop, also set up a bit like a pistol, but not as overtly as the TDI. Um, first of all, I'll, I'll show you great, great sheath. Uh, Topps just makes great Kydex sheaths. This one is with a, a, a loop attachment, and that's about the angle it rides in like this. So another great thing about, uh, I mean, this is another great knife with a great fixed blade handle for in the waist carry because it's curved that helps and it's rounded in uh, pretty much all all aspects it's rounded so it does not jab into your body the the rounded shape of the handle that pistol grip shape of the handle is nice for staying out of the way and not jabbing into the old love handles but also this rounded off um, pommel um, it's rounded off when you look at it from the side and it's rounded off when you look at it from the edge and everything. So it's just very comfortable to wear. What do you get once you draw it? Look at this thing. All right, so it's it's a pistol grip dagger, really. You have a symmetrical from from the, uh, from two inches, let's see, what is it? From two inches uh, from the tip back, you have a symmetrical dagger blade. And that edge for the bottom edge, the main edge, continues another inch and a half and so you have a dagger. You have a full-fledged dagger in this tiny little package here. Um, part of what keeps it tiny is that curve and how your um, how your hand is set up. Your thumb comes way up onto the blade. Obviously, you couldn't do this if this weren't bayonet ground. Uh, your finger would be on the edge right there. So they cut in this giant swale. I love this. And it's got really big jimping. And that jimping really grips your thumb. So you're not, if you if you put your thumb in there and you really jam down and put a lot of pressure forward, you are very confident that your not, your finger is pop, thumb is not going to pop up and reach onto that uh, sharp edge there. Now, my thumb isn't that long that that's much of an issue, but someone much larger than I could still use this, put this in their hand, nestle it in there, grip very nicely, put their thumb there, bear down, and bear forward and be confident that it wouldn't pop onto that edge. So this thing is just a masterfully uh, designed uh, small self-defense knife. When it's in reverse grip like this, you have you can accelerate that backhanded slash. With a straight, straight bladed knife, a backhanded slash is just a really uh, uh, inefficient tool. Um, but if the if the knife, if the blade is here, let's show with both knives in hand. If the blade is already you know, oriented outward, you're going to get a lot more power. If you do make contact with a backhanded slash, uh, you have to be so, so close for that. Um, and of course, this is all theoretical. This, this does not come from experience other than just uh, knife sparring in class. But if you have to use this, or if you find yourself using this in very close quarters, that's of course where you'd be using this and in reverse grip, you can use that, that jimped thumb swale here for trapping. Uh, you know, if you, if you find yourself, uh, in a, in a grappling match with someone else with a blade, this makes for a great pinch point where you can grab someone's wrist or arm or whatever, manipulate them, pull them before you do something else. Um, so that's what I've always really loved about this knife. Not only is it a, a dagger and a pistol grip dagger, but it's got this, 
this extra tool here. It's a it's a twofer tool, you know, uh, great for the thumb for for your grip, but also great for trapping in reverse grip. This would be a great one for them to make a, a trainer for, because I see that really being a, a useful self defense knife that uh, police officers and and all sorts could could put to to good use. This one, uh, the patina on the my car to handle is coming along nicely. That's my personal filth signature, uh, sort of just imbued, not imbued, but uh, impregnated into this micarta. Uh, our good friend, our good friend Advanced Knife Bro coined that phrase, and I love it. Personal filth signature. He loves micarta too, and that's one of the things he likes about it. So I, I quote him whenever I get the chance. All right, last in the fixed bladed versions of these self-defense knives is a knife that you've already seen on this show, and it was designed and made by Ken Vihikite of Blackrock Knives. Uh, we'll start with the sheath again, as we did the last one, because the sheath is very important uh, on a on a fixed blade knife. Uh, everything up until now has an awesome sheath if I haven't featured it, just so you know. This uh, Blackrock sheath is really nicely designed. I like the uh, I like the the grommet setup down here, uh, especially if you wear this on on any sort of equipment where you're hanging it upside down. Um, I wouldn't, but it comes set up for scout carry. It came with two uh, in the waistband straps like this. Actually, this is a cheap and different version that I put on this because this also rides at three o'clock in, in my waistband. Uh, this one has a longer handle than uh, I ordinarily like for a self-defense knife, but since the blade, by the way, one of the best she's I've ever had. This thing is awesome. But the blade is short, so it, it it sort of makes up for the lengthy handle. Now, one thing is it is short, but it is very effective. I don't know if you've seen, if you can see that. There, there you can. I, I asked Ken to sharpen the swedge, and he obliged. Now, look at how thin the relief edge is here compared to that. That's a relief edge on a very oblique wedgie type swedge wedgie <laughs> but the uh the main cutting edge is at the end of this super thinly ground uh taper here and it is just astoundingly sharp um this was uh a favorite knife of mine of a recent uh, of a friend uh, at work who recently died when we all got and and uh he he used to um uh, i would bring my knives to him uh, anytime I got him because he had these gigantic hands and uh, he loved this knife. He loved it because his gigantic hands fit in it. Uh, for me, it it also fits. This is one of those designs. And Ken Vihikite, you see him, he's a giant too. So this handle design is unique in that it can accommodate um, smaller hands, like my hands are medium sized, and uh, but it can also accommodate giant hands. Um, so anyway, just a very, very beautiful and effective knife. Now, not for nothing, this is a custom. So there is no knife out there exactly like this one with that unique pattern, rock pattern in the handle, and then that engraving on the on the blade. This thing reminds me of a, a dinosaur kind of, um, but just a, just a great knife. Also excellent in reverse grip, as you might imagine with that ring there, even without using the ring. The shape of that pommel is, awesome for like even if that ring wasn't there and it was filled in weren't there and that was filled in were filled in oh boy i'm getting uh, getting into it with my grammar it would be an excellent handle shape you've got that point you can use and um if you do any karambity kind of manipulations this shape of the of the ring the outer shape of the ring is great for stopping the knife uh when it's flipping around so an amazing knife. You can see the you can see the similarities actually uh, sitting next to the felony stop. They're very closely sized and have a similar uh, kind of silhouette. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I brought up my buddy who just recently died. Uh, here's to you, Marco. He was going to get one of those fox knives, uh, uh, monkey thumpers, and he didn't have a chance to. Funny thing is, is when he drew this knife. He sliced himself so badly. He had his finger right there. And I was about to say, no. And he, and all day long, he was walking around with this bandage, giant bandage on his finger. And he was giggling, that knife, that knife. So, 
earthquake. So anyway, that that is that is the Black Rock Monkey Thumper. And uh, it is an excellent self-defense knife, fixed blade. Now we have four more um, and then four and a half more. Let's say four and a half more. And uh, next is a, is a uh, folder. I've seen this one a lot recently. Uh, this is the MK Ultra by Fox Knives and Jason Knight. Jason Knight designed this. Fox Knives manufactured it. And uh, it is being distributed by Tactical Elements initially, but now... I saw that uh, uh, Knife Center has it, and I don't know who else has it now, but it's uh, going further and wider than just tactical elements now. Uh, you've got your um, titanium frame lock side. You've got your beautiful, grippy micarta side, and grip is a big part of uh, this list. As you can see, everything here has a unique and, um, well, uh, optimized grip as does this. Optimized by the materials, you have the micarta, which is just, this is kind of a roughly uh, roughly finished canvas micarta. So the canvas means uh, thicker weave, bigger weave, and um, so more texture. And uh, when wet also, but also the shape of the handle. On the other side, you have titanium, obviously, but that shape of that handle is really accommodating. And, uh, and encapsulating you have this bird's beak at the end and then you have well a sort of horse hoof pommel here the flare there and the flare there you've got this uh dip right in here and then you have where the thumb is placed and the guard here it's just you are locked in locked in so in terms of grip great great self-defense knife but then look at that blade in terms of the blade also excellent for, for self-defense you have a point that is easily accessible and kind of in line with the center of your fist. So uh, um, you have a point that you can use for thrusting, which sometimes people look at kukris and think that they cannot thrust. Of course they can, and this is no exception. But also you have that wicked recurve. The wicked recurve in combination with the angle that it's set up from your handle just gives you devastating slashing power. So this is one of those folders that is a great EDC. It's a great task, task oriented knife, um, but also just would make an excellent thing. It would be that, like that thing you're very relieved you have in your pocket if uh, you're in a dark alley and, uh, you know, you know the whole scenario. You'd be happy that you picked that one up on that day. So next we're going to move on, but I'm going to, I'm going to in this sort of a uh, fashion, move these knives down and create a little more space here on the cutting board. Okay, next is kind of a, it's a two, a two for, I don't even like that term. And this is the second time I've said it twice. It's a two for one, if you will. And uh, I'm going to talk about the Yojimbo and the Yojumbo here. Some people don't like the small size or the large size. Some people don't like the small size. So uh, thankfully, Spyderco and Michael Janet, designer of this uh, of this task-driven self-defense uh, setup here, uh, designed the Yojumbo uh, for a four and a half inch, for lovers of the four and a half inch blade. The Yojimbo, this is the Yojimbo 2, is a three and a quarter inch blade. I'm gonna put this down for a second so that I can talk about the Yojimbo. Now, why is this small, weird looking knife uh, a good self-defense knife? Well, first we'll go back to the grip. Uh, the contours of the grip and the handle, uh, the grip and the blade allow you to fully, fully grip it and make a, a tight fist around it. You see how it tapers towards the pommel? You have these uh, finger swales there, and then it tapers, tapers towards the pommel. Having a uh, thinner pommel there allows you to really squeeze down on this thing so that uh, if you are using it in some sort of a uh, self-defense situation and you're just you're clamping down on that thing and uh, it's not leaving your hand because of how it's contoured and and I also believe that with a lot of adrenaline and squeezing down tight um, it's just small enough that it'll bury itself in there in your in your fist you have this uh, swale here for your thumb and uh, together wow You've got a, a straight edge going all, all the way out to that very acute tip. And if you've uh, seen the interviews we did with, we've done with uh, Michael Janich or have seen any of his other interviews, he talks about 
the self-defense power of that straight edge and how when you're swinging here, we'll use, we'll use this here. When you're swinging a knife with a curved edge at something, as you go against here, let me try and set it up like this. As you go against that something, the blade is shying away because of the upward curve. And so you're not getting as deep a penetration on that slash as you could if you had a straight edge, which will stay in contact with that thing you're cutting on the whole arc of your motion. <laughs> this is a terrible illustration. Sorry, but uh, so that blade will, that straight edge will maintain contact with whatever it's cutting until it reaches the tip because it is straight. It does not shy away. I shy away. It does not, um, you know what I mean. It does not curve up. So that is long for saying uh, this sort of Warncliffe blade shape is excellent for self-defense. And uh, these Yojimbos and Yojumbos really do make uh, excellent self-defense knives. But also, as you can tell by looking at it, great utility knives. I mean, they, they look like box cutters, right? They look like glorified, dressed up box cutters. And, and that is in no way uh, denigrating this gorgeous design. Michael Janish, who is a total badass. Uh, I think it is gorgeous. So that's all I'm saying. But you can see how it has the same sort of utility as a uh, as a mat knife or a utility knife. All right, I'm going to stop right there and move on to the next one, which is the Emerson Peace Arc. And now this accelerates the concept I was just talking about. This is a hawkbill blade. Um, and it doesn't have a straight edge. It has a, a downward curving edge. So that that accelerates the concept of continual contact with the medium you're cutting uh, that the Yojimbo just started. Okay, so why do I think, why does this knife make the list instead of the other Emersons I have? Well, first of all, it is that hawk, hawk bill blade because when gripped in hand, you can still use it easily for thrusting if need be. And if you have it in a Pakal grip, it would work great as a sort of Pakal style knife because actually the ergonomics work this way. But also the uh, the handle setup is, is fantastic. You've got jimping right here in this bird's beak at, towards the pommel, which really locks your whole back end and your pinky in. And then you have, uh, well, you have the deep guard area here and just a perfect setup with that wave so that you can have this in a standard sort of fencing grip and uh, you've got great extension there and, and just great grip. Of course, you have the wave feature. So, uh, you know, I wish kind of every self-defense knife had that wave feature. I know you can buy aftermarket uh, wave features for the, uh, for the Yojimbo, I've seen that. This knife would make an excellent waved knife, though it would ruin the lines and the ergonomics a little bit, but the fact that you can just draw this out without any sort of uh, skill needed and have it deploy and be ready in hand is really the reason I put this on there. I think that blade is just wicked and effective, uh, but the whole setup with the handle and the deployment just wins the day. And then if you uh, carry it in reverse, if you use it in reverse like this, uh, you have an excellent chance of making a backhand swipe or a backhand slash work because you've got the, the point pointing into the target as you as you slash. And uh, just the handle feels great, very ergonomic. You don't see this particular handle much in Emerson. Uh, he he does a lot of recycling of handles and uh, but this shape you don't see much. Correct me if I'm wrong, Edwin. All right. Last the last full knife uh, in my 10 and a half knives, great self-defense knives, is a cold steel. You knew there was going to be another cold steel folder, but I was going back and forth between do I choose something small or something large? Because we all know the large knives are great, great self-defense knives because they're giant. I decided psh, I'm going to leave that to the side for now, and I'm going to go with this. It's big enough at four inches. Look at this gnarly thing. This is the cold steel black talon two. 
the Black Talon one, or just the Black Talon, was a uh, premium edition knife with micarta and G10, or micarta or polished G10 and bolsters and all that stuff. <coughs> Excuse me, that they came out with in the in the early 2000s, I think. Well, it had this blade shape, and that knife I don't think did extremely well. It was a very expensive cold steel um, before they even made the switch to the higher end steels, and uh, they brought it back in a more pedestrian um, iteration here. So first of all, let's look at this blade. I know we've been looking at the handles first, but geez, what's screaming out to you here? The handle or the blade? Look at this blade. Giant S-curve blade inspired heavily by the um, Spider Go Civilian, a knife that was originally designed uh, to for the government of South Africa. It was commissioned to help thwart rapes and other sorts of street crime that were rampant. Uh, in the in the late uh, mid and late 90s, I guess. But the civilian uh, has this shape edge, but the blade itself is much more delicate. You would not want to use that blade for any sort of utility, whereas this thing makes an outstanding diviner and uh, and other sort of outdoor. It, it, you know, you would think this is pure self defense. This is actually a pretty good outdoor knife too. Um, you can also get it in plain edge if you want to use it for pruning and stuff. Uh, but anyway, I, I'm sure most people who buy this are not buying it to prune. They're buying it to carry and to feel safe with. And the fact that they really beefed up this blade compared to the civilian is, is going to give you that peace of mind. Plus, that triad lock is going to give you some peace of mind because you know once it's open, it's just not going to close on you, period. And this would be a horrifying knife to have close accidentally on you. You also have this thumb plate, which allows you to auto deploy the blade from your pocket. It works like a wave feature. It grabs the uh, pocket seam as you draw it out. So this is another, uh, as you can see, it's becoming, it's not totally prerequisite, but I would really love to have some sort of wave feature on all of the knives I'm, I ever might consider carrying um, for self-defense. But that's just not how it works. Uh, the handle is also awesome. It's it's uh, pretty large. Gives you a lot of, a lot of uh, grip area. It's got an interestingly shaped pommel. This sort of angle is good to accommodate the thumb. My thumb is, you know, my hands are, aren't small enough to reach all the way over like that. So that, that actually works nicely there if I were to use this in reverse grip. But I don't see myself doing this. This, that blade design is really, a gross motor freak out uh, design. You know, you're, you've got the knife in hand and you're just, you know, you have no training and you have someone on top of you or coming at you and you just swing this thing and, uh, and you'll, you'll stab the thing, the person or the animal that's attacking you with that downward pointing tip. And then, you know, just imagine what else you're going to do with that when you get to the slashing part of that motion. So this is just an utterly obscenely brutal blade. And um, <clears throat> like I said, uh, I think there are quite a few peaceful uses for it. I really like I've used it for divining. If you're a gardener, consider it. Uh, consider it because you could be out in the garden tending to your roses with your black talon too. And then, you know, bandits ride up on you and, and, and look at what you have in hand. You have a black talent too. So you can vanquish any foe coming up with you with, uh, with a lesser knife in any case. So consider it. What do you think? What do you think? Ten and a half. What's the half you say? Okay, well, this is the knife that I carry every work day behind my badge. And that is the Bastinelli Creations, Bastinelli Knives, Diagnostic. I call it half a knife. You know why. It's because it's small. Look at it. It's small. It's sort of in the um, tradition of that stashable OSS spy knife um, kind of concept. Really small, beautifully made by Tops. It's chisel ground. Well, let me get my hand under there. It's chisel ground, so it's flat on that side where you have the logo. And then you have that really nice deep bevel there with the chisel edge, which is just wickedly sharp. What does this get used for, you ask? Yes, opening envelopes and packages. It gets, it gets a little bit of mileage doing that. Because uh, really, 
if you're if you're being delicate with it, this does make an excellent box cutter. Because look at it, you, very little effort, just unzip it, and then you can hold it on your on your hand while you're doing other stuff, and then you can go back and use this. But I have it there also as a self defensey kind of thing because it's just small, discreet, and would really work. So this is the half knife, ten and a half self defense blades. Uh, what do you think? Do you have a collection like this? Do you think that these knives are uh, useful in the age of the gun? I know a lot of people just just pack a gun and that's that. That's their that's how they think of self defense. Uh, me, there's a lot more imagination that goes into it because of the training I've done and because of the imagination I have. <laughs> so thankfully, I've never had to use these in any sort of situation where I could actually tell you how they work, but just extrapolating from cutting targets and from knowing a little bit here and there about knife techniques and then having seen other people test and seeing the damage that these things can do to see the damage what a really what a what a case peanut could do if if in the right hands is is pretty astounding um there's an old story about colonel applegate um when he was down in mexico being let off by some bandits who were gonna you know shoot him in the desert and leave him there and he had a little tiny folder, like a like a pen knife, uh, in his back pocket that he was able to access, cut himself free, and he he took care of his captors. I don't know how many, but I know he got one with his little pen knife, and then he probably got another weapon or something. I know that that's just an oral tale that I'm passing along. Look it up; it's a cool story. I'm sure I may have gotten some of those details wrong, but the fact is that if you know what you're doing, or if you have an imagination, or if you're just being audacious and you're in trouble. You can turn anything into a tactical knife, anything with an edge. Um, also, you could use a pencil. So that's it for this uh, this edition of the Knife Junkie Podcast Supplemental number 203. Thanks so much for joining. Uh, check out our merchandise on the on the website. Uh, go to thenifejunkie.com slash shop and, uh, and check out what we have. You can also go to thenifejunkie.com slash dull and check out the t-shirts that Jim just had up on screen. Uh, don't take dull for an answer t-shirts, either in white, or if you go to dull, uh, dull two, you get them in black. And uh, it's a really cool design that Jim, excuse me, that Jim came up with. And I love it. We just sent one out to uh, a gentleman who got a movie quote uh, during Thursday Night Knives or the supplemental. I can't remember what it was. He got the, uh, the Fletch quote that I kind of floated out there. And uh, so congratulations, sir. Uh, he got one of these don't take dull for an answer uh, t-shirts. You too can get one of those t-shirts. All right. So for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying thank you so much for checking in. Uh, check us out tomorrow night on Thursday Night Knives, 10 p.m. Eastern, live on YouTube. And then, of course, every Sunday we bring you a, an interview with someone, some luminary or interesting person from the knife world. So be sure to check that out as well. Like, comment, subscribe, share this video. It really helps out. All righty, y'all. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.